How's everybody doing today? Can you hear me? Cool. I just want to thank Alexis and Truth Farm for having us all come together at this awesome community event. Um, it's really good to see like what's available because there's a lot of things in this community um, to see the resources that we can go to and work together. It takes teamwork to make the dream work, we like to say. Um, but let me just uh, introduce myself. Um, my name is Andrew Rosenbarker and I'm the group's pastor at Two Rivers Church. Um, it's a new church that planted about four years ago at Regal Cinema, and now we're at the Boys and Girls Club on Clinton Street. Um, so anyway, I, I'm a groups pastor. I oversee, uh, I counted today, we have 28 groups at the church, and the one I'm about to talk to you about is just one of 28, and uh, it's called Brand New Addiction Recovery. You know, I never... Uh, I wasn't always a reverend. I wasn't always somebody that people looked up to. You know, for 12 years of my life, I was high and drunk every single day. I sold drugs. I was the family member that watched his family be destroyed because of drugs and alcohol. I've seen so many friends that I've used with go on to harder things such as heroin. I've seen a lot of death in my life. And I, I just had this desire to make a change, to, to, to step out in the community and, and try to influence and, and give people hope. I've experienced it, I've experienced it, that I'm a whole new person. The Bible says that in Christ you're a new creation. The old has passed away, behold, you've become new. And that's, uh, that's what we stand on. Uh, he, he makes you brand new. Not just a good version of yourself, He makes you a whole brand new person and that it's just amazing. My life's been blessed ever since that day. And, and you can come to Brand New if you don't believe in God. You can come to Brand New if you want to just be involved with our, our fellowship. We have so many amazing opportunities. So the, the big thing that we see is, is connect people to God. Well, he, he's the one who does the, the deep work. He's the one who changes you. But we also have the second component, which is creating outlets to actually live a life sober, a life not enslaved to drugs and alcohol. So we do so many different things. Like I said, I, I'm, I'm just one group of over 28 groups um, with the church. It's a church that welcomes addicts, welcomes people in recovery, welcomes family members to uh, the church. You're not going to come into Two Rivers and be like, oh, he's got tattoos, let's, let's cast him out. You know, like, we welcome everybody to come in. You're going to experience so much love. And, and, and we're just going to help you and, and encourage you and, and, and help you through drugs and alcohol. So what happens is somebody will come into brand new, they'll experience change, they'll experience something, and now it's like, now what? Now what do I do in my life? How do I have fun? Because that's the biggest thing. Like, people are afraid to put down the bottle. We do not, like, we don't go around and say, hey, Steve, I'm, I'm an addict. We don't like to this labeling. It's negative, you know, has a negative connotation to it. There's so much more to people than just the bad stuff that we've done in the past. We want to focus on the good stuff that we can do in the future and our positive attributes and try to strengthen them. Um, we, the focus is on four main points, which is um, maintaining. Maintaining, enhancing motivation, coping with urges, um, managing thoughts, feelings, and behaviors, and lifestyle balance. Um, the tools I had that are in the tool book help us do this. But lifestyle balance, like building and enhancing motivation, we participate in um, charity events, you know, volunteering. Um, Stuff that puts us on like the right side of the line and not the wrong side. And we're trying to change our lives based on trying to get prepared to go to school. We're trying to basically have an all-out personal change based on changing our behaviors completely and thoughts and feelings. And it's been working. Um, so our recovery is currently um, in Europe. Australia, all over the West Coast, all the bigger cities, it's moving east, um, it's in Canada, it's big, it's really popular, I mean, um, it's a secular organization, 
So if we have religious members, it's just our program has nothing to do with spirituality. It has to do with scientific research that has been shown to work in the past and um, has had great results. The national organization that is in use currently in over 30,000 churches across the country. Celebrate Recovery probably has a couple of distinctives rather than focusing on one or another addictions, anything that controls you tends to isolate you from your family, from God, from society, whether it be anger, food, pornography, of course, chemical addictions, anything that controls you. So, and it may even be a mental health issue, which we also have recognized as an appropriate part of recovery. <clears throat> Secondly, again, with the, always associated with the church and in recovery, we consider some organizations speak of a higher power. We're very clear about who that higher power is. Jesus Christ is our higher power. When we turn our life and our will over to Him, He becomes the power from within to enable us to recover. Now, if I were introducing myself in a Celebrate Recovery meeting, I would introduce myself as a grateful believer in Jesus Christ who struggles with lust and anger. And my name is Bob. But my identity is now in Jesus Christ. It's not in an addiction or an attraction. So perhaps you can can understand there's a slight distinction we make there in what our emphasis is. My contact information is over on the side table. Uh, and if you uh, are interested, we also uh, run a van from Binghamton out to uh, our program, which is in, on Thursday nights in Windsor. And we also facilitate a, a celebrate recovery in the Bruin County Jail as well, and we'd be happy to talk to you after. Thursday evenings in Windsor. Better write that down in the back. Yeah, that's on that, and it's on here as well. Is it on this one, though? Somewhere in there. I'm glad to be here. I'm kind of on the other side. Um, our group is for parents, grandparents, siblings, aunts and uncles who have lost a child. And I'm saying lost a child from baby to 60 years old. Um, we meet twice a month at Nimmonsburg Methodist Church, which is located up across from Broome Community College, now called Suey Broome. Um, we meet at 7 o'clock on Mondays and 10 a.m. on Saturdays. My table over there with the butterflies, I have a um, calendar over there, a yearly calendar. There's also some other information. Um, so we're, our vision for Compassionate Friends is that everyone we meet gets help. Um, it's a terrible journey to be on. This is my son. He's been gone for a long time. I've been in this group a long time. And I also get pretty emotional. Um, I have a lot of passion for this organization. It saved my life. And through the years, I think we've saved a lot of lives. Um, a lot of our parents have turned to alcohol and drugs because of their child passing on. So they ended up in other treatment programs, and often um, they died from a broken home. So by coming to our group, it just shows you that we're there for understanding, compassion, hope, friendship. Hope is our big, is our word. In fact, over on the table, there's a basket of stones, and it's just a basket of stones that say hope on them. So for anyone who would like that stone, we can all have that hope in our pocket at any time. Um, it's just a great organization. Um, we're like family there. You come in, you come into our group, you sit at a table, um, we have a stone, a different stone, every meeting that we pass. So if you don't want to speak, you don't have to. There's no pressure. Um, you can talk if you want, you can share your child. And you may not share your child in the beginning of the meeting, 
But by the end of that meeting, I bet you when you break into small group, you can't stop talking about each other. So we invite And they're all interactive. Our support groups and our classes and our education programs are very interactive. Um, we want people talking. We want people sharing. Uh, it's not just you listening to a few staff people. It's about everyone that comes in. Our wellness center is about the participants, and we are encouraging each other, supporting each other, sharing our stories, sharing our difficulties. And it's that that container that we all come in and contributing is what makes it such a rich experience. In addition to that, we also have on the weekends a beacon program for people that are also dealing with substance abuse issues in their life. In neither of these programs do you have to have a referral to us. You do not have to come in with a referral from another agency or from a wellness practitioner. If you choose to come in on your own, it's voluntary. It, it's, you just come in. Um, we also have job coaching, um, computer labs that are open for people and a lot of, just a lot of wellness programming. It's a very rounded uh, approach every month that we take and very broad spectrum of things because we know that what one person can get really excited about, another person like, meh, whatever. And so we're trying to offer enough variety that everybody has a little bit of taste of something that might appeal to them. But we also have um, a support group for parents and caregivers. So that's parents and caregivers. It meets once a month at our location uh, there on Fort Street. And this is specifically geared for people who are raising youth right now that have either emotional or mental health issues that are having a real struggle in their own lives right now. And so often parents can just feel overwhelmed by that experience themselves. And they're, they're looking for where do I turn and what do I do and, and you know, the school's looking at me to do something and I've done everything I, I know how to do and it's not working. What do I do about that? So this is a support group specifically for parents or caregivers of our youth so that you've got someone there too. And we also have parent partner programs that are there for the parents. They are a support specifically for the parent that sometimes can go to the meetings, the school meetings and some of the other you know, wrap around meetings, so you've got someone sitting next to you that's there for you. That's there for you to make sure that you get heard and your concerns are heard and what you feel the needs are that are not being met. So that's part of MHAS, not Sunrise, but part of MHAS. We have many, many family youth and adult programs at MHAS. I supported the ones, or I mentioned the ones for our wellness program. And the last thing I want to mention is what I hand out here, and I have more at my table. We have a, a grant through WellLinked, and it is to support the five um, counties here in the, in the southern tier. And it's a, a kind of a one-stop place to have a lot of mental health practitioners who can go on to this link and be listed for the different mental health services and also holistic practitioners. So it's not just agencies on there, it's also individual practitioners. So I want to make sure that you all have that for your agencies because you are absolutely invited to be part of that. But also if there's any, uh, you know, that includes your massage therapists, you know, Reiki practitioners, different people who have holistic practices, you are also included in this group. You would be welcome to come in as well.
And uh, so, um, but really what brought me strongly into Al-Anon was uh, I was so sick with multiple sclerosis I could barely get out of bed. And my son had a heroin addiction problem. So I came into Al-Anon totally committed to whatever they had to say. <laughs> And uh, we have many meetings throughout the week in Broome County. Uh, there, on the piano back there that's covered up, there's some schedules and some general information on al -Anon. And when you go into an Al-Anon meeting, um, you don't have to say anything. You don't even have to introduce yourself. Um, but uh, I, my home meeting is on Monday nights in Shenango Bridge at uh, St. Mark's. It's called Courage to Change. Um, and you'll find a lot of information and support and help there. And really nothing says it better than the preamble to our 12 steps. We are a 12 step program, although you don't have to be religious. But spirituality helps because that's what really brings it home. Uh, the al family groups are a fellowship of relatives and friends of alcoholics or addicts. You can always put addicts in that alcoholic slot who share their experience, strength, and hope in order to solve their common problems. We believe alcoholism is a family illness and that changed attitudes can aid recovery. Al-Anon is not allied with any sect, denomination, political entity, organization, or institution. It does not engage in any controversy, neither endorses nor opposes any cause. There are no dues for membership. Al-Anon is self-supporting through its own voluntary contributions. Al-Anon has but one purpose, to help families of alcoholics. We do this by practicing the 12 steps, which I have had a spiritual awakening, so I can attest to today's work. Um, we have seven people in the vet center, five of them are veterans, four are combat veterans. Um, so we have tried to ensure that there's veterans in the vet center, but we had two of our counselors, like I said, one came from the domiciliary in Bath, so he has a very uh, big knowledge of of the addiction side, and then one of our counselors, she was at the outpatient clinic uh, before we stole her too. Uh, over, but I mean, it's VA to VA, so we didn't, you know, she didn't go too far. Um, so yeah, those are just kind of, you know, some of the things we do. We have a women's veterans group, we have a spouse support group, um, and, it's, and I promise you, it's, it's not a, a hawking session. They're, they're, they're learning skills, coping skills, how to, to deal, because some of the Vietnam veterans are just coming to get to seek help. Um, so the spouses have been, or, or even Korean in World War II, we have one World War II, we also have a Korean veteran. Um, so the spouses, like I said, are, are dealing with some of that as well. The kids are dealing um, with, the, with a lot of not understanding what's going on with dad or with mom, why they want to play with me, why they're always isolating, not want to, whatever. So, you know, we ensure that we work with community to, that where we can't help, for some things that um, we have community partners who can, who can definitely uh, fill in some of those, those gaps for us. So, so you know, we, we just ensure that um, family is, uh, you know, taken care of. We have, let me go over our calendar here. <laughs> um, right now we have a hiking group that just started. Uh, we have what's called the Better Run Group. Um, so it's a running group. Um, and it's also a walking group, it's just not for running. Um, we also have a, uh, PTSD symptom management group, MSR, which is Mind for Stress Reduction and Yoga. That class has. I teach the crochet group, and the reason I teach the crochet group because me as a combat veteran, I learned that it was helping me to, to determine where I was if I was really stressed by my stitches. If my stitches were really tight, or if they were really loose, or if they were kind of in between. And so, mind you, I have a lot of spouses in the class versus veterans. We also have a garden group. It's just kind of, some people like to, you know, get in the dirt, just do things with their hands to kind of, you know, just help them be, be um, involved. Um, I also teach a Tai Chi group. It's Tai Chi for arthritis, but it's Tai Chi nonetheless. It's, it's what you would think it is, like you see the movies in uh, Central Park and people just moving slow. And, and most of you can understand as that goes along with addiction as well. Unless you have been through it yourself, you cannot say to the person, I understand what you're going through. So part of what we do is just to try to just ensure that the family members get some, some skills, some motivation to, um, to want to work with their veteran when they return. 
uh, because a lot of the times uh, we have the, the, the divorce rate in the veteran community or the military community is so high it's ridiculous because uh, the skills um, people just don't 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 know to say okay where can I go and get help what should I do um, so we work with uh, multiple uh, agencies uh, around uh, the southern tier um, just networking because any veteran who walks in the door whether they're combat or not we see them they can be seen up to three uh, three times and that would be job referrals um, can you hear me? I'm sorry. Can yeah, I, I can hear you well. Thank you. Sorry. Um, job referrals, parenting classes, benefits, and things of that nature. And so we partner with uh, with the community partners because if there's something that we can't do, remember we are federal government, so if there's things that we can't do, we want to ensure that the veteran is getting help. We, we will not send you away unless we have a name, a number, you have talked to the person before they left the office, before you leave the office to ensure that you're going to get the help that you need. Now I will say, and uh, uh, some people in this room may, may be able to identify that uh, with this, but I get a, a lot of um, parents or family members who step to, who come and talk to me and they say, you know, I keep telling them they, they came home, they live with me, and I keep telling them they need to go and get help. That's where I like to, I like big audiences because I can say, stop saying what you need to do. Ask the question, would you like to get help and would you like me to go with you? You cannot force somebody to get help when they're not ready to get help. And that's in, in any avenue that's just not a veteran, that's across the board. When they are ready, they're ready. And then they may turn to you and say, hey, I'm ready, will you go with me? Um, a lot of times what I do with family members is I, I give them brochures and, and we have magnets and I say, just put it around the house. Don't say anything. They'll see it. And when they're ready, they're ready. So again, I'm over at the big red table talk with the dog tags over there. And just as another, just FYI, a lot of people see the crisis line number and think better. Some people do. It is not the press one for better. The crisis line number is for anyone who needs to call and talk to someone. When we say, for instance, they can't get to me, they can't get in touch with whomever. So the crisis line number, and I have a lot of dog tags and uh, bracelets over there if anybody needs to read. So thank you. We're working with the veteran, we're working with the family. That includes the children because sometimes the children don't know who mom or dad is when they come home. And our family makeup is not just mom, dad, brother, sister, husband, wife, children. Family makeup is whoever that person is in close contact or living with. It could be the aunt, the grandmother, so on and so forth. So those people are eligible for our services. Is recovering or from a drug addiction or in the middle of a drug addiction, it can it's one of it's a contributing factor to postpartum depression and it can really increase um, the chances of the mother or their partner developing it because because they have they have guilt or there's many reasons. So they do definitely go hand in hand. I've worked with a few um, recovering mothers and um, I, I love working with them. Um, and it's hard to admit that we're not happy after having a baby because it's such a beautiful time, but it's messy and emotional. So we need, we need support too. And um, so I meet with anyone who's, who's interested um, the last Monday of every month at your home public library, uh, which is on Main Street in Johnson City from I'm usually there for anyone who needs me from about 6 to 8 o'clock, and um, anybody's welcome, uh, men, women, um, and we, it's, it's not formal. Um, sometimes there's three of us, sometimes there's ten of us, and it's really just a place to get together and talk about what you're going through or what your partner's going through with, other pe with people who understand. 